um, on September 15th. This is the Finance Committee meeting. Um, first item on the agenda is to review the minutes. We have a motion from... So, make a motion we approve the minutes. Uh, any discussion? I, yes. I yes. think it should be noted on them somewhere that Jim Camby has prepared them. I'm still right at the top. Pardon? I thought it said so right at the top. Does it say I'm that anywhere? Top. Did I miss it? Yeah, yeah. Up on top. Right above the other no. yes. Compiled by James Sanders. Yes, it says it right above the other Credit to Cam Mike Co author. Oh, <laughs> well, mine doesn't have that. You're not looking. You're not looking uh, at the right one. We, 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 didn't, we didn't give you the right oh, one. Oh, I didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> we gave you the only one. <laughs> Any other discussion? Can we get everybody who's here? We need to vote. No further discussion. We need to do a roll call vote. John Buffton, aye. John Pereski, aye. John Petrork, aye. Julie Chalpin, aye. James Camby, is aye. Skip Olmstead, aye. All right, that passes 6 0 0. Now, is Allison on? Allison She's is not here yet. She's going to be late. Oh, okay. I don't think. She's not on, then we don't have to do a roll call vote. <laughs> Um, they said last time, even though everybody was here, we still had to do it. So. Because of a hybrid. Because it's a hybrid format or something. So, um, let us go to the warrant articles and let's start with any zoning bylaws we have not yet addressed. There is a new one. Yep. Article 6. That's what? not zoning, though. I mean, that's not. The only thing that's new is a numbering. There was no numbers on it. No, 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 there's no, a no. whole entire new article, but we'll get to that article. after a minute. We're going to start yeah, with the planning board yeah. articles. So Article 7 has already been approved. Article 8 has not. Um, so let's start with Article 8. Everybody, everybody has a copy of it. Do you guys want a copy? Article 8 is the 50 foot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, do we have a motion? I make a motion we approve this uh, article. I'll second. Any discussion? Yes. Go ahead. I, I'm opposed to it as it's presently worded. I think. <laughs> I don't think the town should get preferential treatment. I think we should make it applicable to everybody. If it's, if it's okay to do for the town of Deerfield, it should be okay to do for its residents. And I think the warrant should be changed to reflect that. It's my opinion. And I've got, I have some concerns with the need for the article. It's, it's never been clear to me uh, most of the the lots that we're talking about uh, have been in existence for years, and it would seem like they should be exempt from or grandfathered, or grandfathered whatever, yeah. in whatever the, the term is that <laughs> that the planning board would use. What is that term? Pre there you go. Pre existing. Uh, in any event, and then finally, and what are we going to do if this gets turned down again at town meeting? This article Is was there... put out by the selectmen. Yeah. And my understanding was last time they put it out, they put it out for a town-wide thing for 50 foot anywhere. And now they say this is restricted to the R1 and C1 district, CRB1 and C R B C one and I. Industrial. Yeah. And industrial. I guess that's an answer to, to your question. So three districts. The town yeah. didn't want it. Mm -hmm. I guess that's an answer to your question of why it's restricted, because the town didn't want it when it was offered to everybody. No. No, I think back when we voted the town meeting it was municipalities only. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it was town wide. I, I don't care where it is. I think it who it, to the, who it's for. You guys may have opinions on this. I think the answer to the grandfathering thing is that in the future there could be cases, the prime example is the Leary lot, 
where there's an existing lot that is owned by leaders. They want to sell half of it, which would not meet the 100-foot thing. So it would be a, essentially a new lot that would not meet the 50-foot. Therefore, it wouldn't be, grandfather's the wrong word, pre-existing, and it wouldn't be. We can grow, we can grow fruit up there, or vegetables. Known as the marijuana. How about marijuana? No, that's a vegetable, right? Animal, mineral, vegetable. Depends on whether you're smoking it or not. <laughs> and then the question is, if this thing should get out of defeat, what what options are we looking at? Is there another option that we might? Would you have to bring it forward to the planning board and do it case by case? I don't know. Yeah. That would be, that's one of the things we go to the VA each time, each case. And it would be part of the. I mean, that's that's one. Is that, can we take it? Can we take it to the ZBA? Well, I mean, each time. Well, I don't know. So that that brings up a question: if if it goes to the ZBA and they decide, yeah, you can have the 50 foot frontage, would that have to be then approved, ratified by the town meeting? No, because no. if it isn't, there's going to be a lot of people who suspect skullduggery in the town since they already suspect. Exactly. Depends on something that everybody sees now. Yeah. That Why should we wait? <laughs> Vote well, now. Huh? We don't have that authority. Right. I no, guess, we don't. I guess you can make a motion that's town meeting, probably. I would have a question of if, if 50 foot for these three district determines we vote and it moves forward and it passes in that, uh, will that become a model for the rest of the town? And with that question, I guess would be if it were used to be a model for the rest of the town, town wide, are there any concerns of going to 50 foot throughout the town? And are there, can you think of off the top of your head, any major concerns throughout the town for that 50 foot in comparison to what we have now? And I've been thinking about that a little bit, and I haven't been able to come up with anything. And I'm not claiming that I know everything by any stretch of imagination, but I just, I, I guess this, I think, would benefit the downtown area of what we're trying to do. But I'm just, to, you know, 
will this in the future become a model for the rest of the town? Well, I think, and is there going to be consequences if this does move forward to become a model for the rest? I mean, the reason that we're doing this is that we we're looking for parking or driveways of some sort, right? That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But that's not the way it's written. This is for anything the town owns. Right. For whatever purpose. The town can build a building and put a, put a museum in there, so long as they got 50 feet of frontage. And never let it stand back. And they get permission from you, and they get permission from us, and they get permission from the town. Right. Those are just the to the permission? No, they don't need permission. No, not, they don't need to not, well, yeah. not really. I think what she means is they would need to. Yeah. We would need approval for spending the money. Okay. Town approval, right. Yeah. What? If, if, where, if, the, if, if the museum goes in, they're going to have to get permission for 50 foot frontage? That's not the way I interpret this. They won't need it, right. But they'll need permission to spend the money to build the museum. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> It's going to have to come before no, planning. Yeah. yeah, nobody so there are checks and balances through the system as far as the projects. True. Let me tell you where I stand with it, okay? Yep. Can I have a floor? We got it. Okay. One liter lumber. Or whatever you call it now, Hampshire lumber. This was set up a long time ago, back when I was a selectman. They came and they wanted to know if they gave 50 foot of frontage, whether the town could put a road in there. And that way, if they put a road in there, it would help them with their parking problem. Because if you're going from Elm Street and taking right on railroad, the town owns within two feet of their building. And then when you take that abutment that they put out from the railroad fiasco, trucks can't even come down railroad street and take a right. But this that just happened recently. They can't take a right because it's too tight of a corner. All right. That property there, we said that we could accept that and they were going to do it. Now this has gone right now, I think, to three owners. And if we can get that property, we can help develop business in that section of town. Now, the question is, is that good for the town? In my book, yes. Now, Rayburn Road, I was part of the fiasco when that came through, and they have two parcels of property. One half is to be used for residential, and one half is to be used for recreational. But the problem is access, and that's because Rayburn Road is only it's 25 feet according to the map, but they don't have 25 feet. They only have 19 feet. You mean wide? 19 feet. I went out with a ruler and measured it. Wide. You mean wide? The width. Okay. 19 feet. Now the question is, can you get two vehicles by? Yes, but you can't get a fire truck or a ladder truck in there. And then if you get in there, you can't get it out unless you back it out. So the question is, do we want to use that? 10 or 15 acres we got up there. Can we use it for senior housing? And can we use it for recreation? And the answer is yes to both of them. So the reason for the 50 foot is maybe they can buy it from somebody, a 50 foot right away, and put a road out there. Now, that's why I support that one. The third one is a town park. Before they put the elementary school in, they had a town park where the elementary school was. They used to have the Cadillac raffle out there. You win first prize, you either get a choice of 25000 or a brand new Cadillac. And guess what? You won. I didn't win out of the Cadillac. <laughs> you have a Cadillac, but I paid for that one. <laughs> they used to have a beer festival out there. And the beer festival, if you bought a mug, you could fill up that mug all night for five bucks. I was going to be out there. And that was a good deal. Now, I don't know if we can get the same deal there. Maybe we can pipe it under the tracks or something. But the bottom line is I think there's a need for more fields in town. That's why I support it. Now, we have a choice. We can say yes to this 
And the question is, can you put in a 50-foot frontage road in there? And as I explained yesterday or Monday night during your planning board meeting, if you take a look at Sugarloaf Street, Sugarloaf Street used to be a four-lane highway, and I forgot that until Bob Decker mentioned it. But the travel lane in one direction is 12 feet. The travel direction in the other lane is 12 feet. And you got eight-foot breakdown lanes. So that's 40 feet. That's a state highway. We don't need a state highway going into that park. All we need is a travel lane in and a travel lane out, maybe a sidewalk in there, and that's about it. Now, if you take the two travel lanes, the two breakdown lanes, and one side of the street, that's in 50 feet. I don't know how somebody is saying that that's unsafe. That's the safest thing that I can think of. Now, we got a choice. We can say yes and allow it to go through, or we can say no. And if you say no, guess what they're going to do next? Next thing you're going to do is say, well, we got to drive, push the thing in, and put a hammerhead, and nobody can stop it. So it's going in anyway. But the question is, what would you rather do? Would you rather turn around and say something like this? Those three parcels are all well known. They all have unique problems. And this is one section that was put out there by the selectmen for a solution. And I think this is an ideal setup. And I think I would suggest that we support this as a recommendation to the town meeting and also to the planning board. Now, that's the way I feel. They don't understand it because nobody's ever told them that. People haven't people haven't advertised that. They're just trying to get this thing through and you only have the information people give you. If we have a town meeting, which we're going to have on October fourth, I'll be glad to get up and explain it again. And people can vote for it and vote against it. Because guess what? That part's going in one way or the other. We've already agreed to spend over $2 million for it, and it's not going to stop just because of that thing. The difference is they're going to put a hammerhead in, which is a turnaround, which is they're, they're allowed to do, and to have somebody say it's unsafe is ridiculous. And all that is, that's a NIMBY, not my backyard. That's all it is. If, if I can ask a supporting question, if there were no parking at all on the parkland, where would visitors to the park park? Pardon? I guess they would park on Main Street, right? They park on all up and down Main Street. Yes, and Main <laughs> Street. people who don't want parking. Main Street to used to be a highway that used to be Route Five and Ten from South Deerfield. So, so what I'm saying is that it sounds like the choice is either access to a parking lot or lots of cars parked on Main Street. Yeah. <clears throat> or just North Main Street. They won't be down South Main Street, Street probably. Well, if you get that many cars, they will park down the South. <laughs> I don't know. I heard you hundreds. Of, heard the, the phrase region. hundreds of you'll buses. You'll need to <laughs> no, if they get the hammerhead going there, they'll still have parking in there, but probably not as much. So right. then, I'm not an engineer, so, so then, so then, they'll be, then they'll be on Main Street. Then they'll be on Main Street. So if you can't park in there, then you park out. As far as having games there, what's wrong with hearing kids play games? To me, I support that. Recreation is good for the town of Deerfield. But some people just don't want it. And guess what? The question is, is it good for the town as an overriding thing? Or is it more important that one person have their say saying, I don't want it? We're supposed to be voting for the good of the town. That's why I support all of these, because I have intimate knowledge with all of them, because I've worked on all of them in one way or another. So that's where I stand. Are we ready to vote? Got it. Anybody else have comments? Hi, Allie. <laughs> any discussion on what I Do you I have any like comments on this one? We are on the um, article. John eight. says that he wants to discuss it more. Is there any, does anybody want to discuss what I think we should do? I think we should change this more to include everybody, not every district. In these districts, don't limit it to municipality. I think you should bring that up at town meeting. I don't think we should do it here. Okay. Do it here? All right. I okay. think what you should do is tell that to the planning board and see what they have to say. Typically, I stay out of planning board issues totally <laughs> unless I have knowledge about an issue. Other than that, I stay out of it. It's like I didn't stick around the other night for the uh, solar because I really don't know nothing about it. Join the club. And I'm smart enough to get out of here. Right. It's Rachel. 
I, uh, I appreciate John's concerns and thoughts on that, but I, I wouldn't want to do anything tonight as yeah, far as trying to include the whole town, only because I'd like to be able to spend more time and, and listen to what the planning board well, I, I would their do. research comes up with and also uh, try to spend a little more time myself evaluate if there if there would be any consequences right uh, trying to extend it to the I whole totally time. agree with that philosophy so, so I think what we should do is we have this in front of us this article and the motion was already made and seconded for discussion right and I'd like to see this move forward because I think it's good for the town yes. so you calling the question or are we letting people talk more if they, if they, they want to talk let them talk Does anybody I'll else have comments time. Yeah. Allie, do you have any comments? Um, no, I don't have any. I, I'm just tickled that someone, that Jack Pachurk knows the term NIMBY. So that, that just made my <laughs> night. <laughs> um, but no, I don't have any, I don't have any new comments. I, um, yeah, nothing to add. I'm not that old. No, I well, that old. <laughs> I just, it just tickled me. I sort of tuned in just in time to hear that. <laughs> oh. I, I just want to say, I do We're trying to give yeah. you work. We don't want you to feel left out. <laughs> yeah, there's our um, yeah, speaker there. I don't think Ellie can hear. All right. Is there any further discussion? It might not hurt to have you. No. Let's do a roll call vote. We're ready for a roll call vote. Yeah, I didn't know if we needed to speak anymore or not. No, we're good. Uh, Jeff Upton, aye. John Presniel, abstain. John Pachorek, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. And Jim Cambius, aye. Skip Olmstead, I'll abstain also. Is that me, Allison Vanderbilt, and I? 5-0-2. Right. That passes. Uh, the next one the floodplain we have voted already the tourism overlay district article 10 um you guys actually haven't voted that right no. you have another no, that's hearing we have that another meeting on until the 30th no. right. are we there's been a lot of discussion about it already are we ready to right. vote it pending their vote or do you want to hold it for um the fourth i have a question no, yeah, I Berkshire Brewery was added last yep. minute. Yep. And I don't know this Article 11, which is the, the lot IDs. Does that now include the Berkshire Brewery yep. lot? Because I don't, I don't know its number. Uh, 135, if I remember right. Five or 168. Is it 168 or 135? Those, are the, that's the Leary lot. That's the Leary lot. Yeah, one's okay. But that's Article 11, and we're still on Article 10. Do we have a motion for Article 10? Myself, I would like to hold until the planning board votes, but that's just not That means we just have to have a meeting before the meeting on the fourth. Right. 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 And we usually do anyway. I, I don't care one way or the other. I've got a, I've got several questions that I would like to ask it before I vote it one way or the other. Yeah. Well, then I guess we'll have to move it in order to discuss it. So I move that we approve Article 10. I'll second that for discussion. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I've looked through this thing, I don't know how many times, and each time I look through it, I find something else that I have either <laughs> questions about or, or I'm not sure what we're doing here. First, can I ask if you know who wrote this thing? Thanks for asking the select board. Yeah, from the select board. Select board? Yes. So Trevor's here. Trevor, who wrote this thing? Trevor's on mute. Unmuted. And that's he a, can hear us. And that's a picture of him. That's not with a real his, person. With his new hat, too. 
Trevor. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, the tourism overlay district bylaw. Who wrote this? Uh, a combination of attorneys. So our 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 uh, council and uh, we had negotiations with councils from Treehouse. Um, so uh, you know, it, bottom line, it was our it was our attorney that signed off on and, and adjusted it. Okay. So the original one came from Treehouse, and then no, the original one less. came from Lisa. And then yeah, Lisa the original came from Lisa. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Welcome. This, I guess, is comment more than anything. It's your first article or first paragraph, forty-nine fifty-one, says purpose. It goes on to say. To enhance tourism to the town of Deerfield while preserving open space, forested areas that other scenic views, how does this <laughs> district preserve open space, forested areas, or and other scenic views? And that's just comment more than. Requirement. Pardon? It has an open space requirement. Right. 25%. 25, and it, it can be wetlands, but it's, it's to preserve some okay. open space. Okay. <laughs> this is all when, when, it, when it says, in the next 4952 overlay district, it says this map shall be considered as a super, as superimposed over other zoning district that's established by this bylaw. When you use the term this bylaw, I assume that means the entire zoning bylaw. Thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it means the map. Yeah, I think it means the map is incorporated in and made part of the bylaw. Yeah, but the other zoning districts established by the bylaw are not established by the tourism overlay district. They're right. established by the greater. Right. Yeah. And if you look at 4953 applicability, I'm not going to read it, but you can see that the lawyers had fun with this one. You mean notwithstanding the foregoing to the contrary? Language like that? Yeah, I love like that. that I love yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, when I look at, at uses by right uses, and that basically means that I guess the property owner or the property, whoever's leasing the property, whatever, these are rights that the that person or entity has. Uh, and I look down at number two, it says craft establishment shall mean a brewery, distillery, winery, cidery, meadery, or a similar establishment specializing in production of beer. So we're talking here about the production of beer, wine, and that sort of stuff. Initially, it was my understanding that Treehouse was not going to be doing any brewing here. I think they're only doing very limited. Um, I think it's like about five percent. Yes. Is, I think what they said, and then they hope to do it. Right, in very slowly. limited on yes With on premises. But it does. Your brew does. Pardon? Your brew does. Oh, I know, but of course, here. well, they are now. They weren't until a week ago. Well. So this was here. So you can do this across the street now, because uh, that's part of the district. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The uh, Yankee Candle can brew they beer. Are. That's well, they don't brew on correct. premises. That's they brew in Connecticut. They already have a microbrew. Yeah, they could. I don't think so. And so, so we we no longer have any. You know, if Yankee Candle comes in and gets a permit to, which they would now have by right to brew beer, that's it. I mean, that's their right mm -hmm. since they're in the district. Is that what we really want? And I guess that's commentary. Uh, I mean, I, I think that, and so again, I, I think that um, that's business. Like, could they sell it there? Then you'd have to have a permit from, I mean, that would be a whole different thing. So um, if they brewed beer there and we were getting taxes from an ongoing business, I mean, we have a lot of beer brewing going on, so it's not like, we're going to, you know, anybody who comes to Deerfield, we could rename our town Beerfield. I have been joking no, about that. No, I know. But um, 
but I mean, I, I don't know that we want to turn away a business if, if we if we're no, in the it, business it's of, not. I mean, it's not. to follow all the other rules, yeah. right? Like if they were selling alcohol, they'd have to get a liquor license. permit. And if they were oh, going to be on the sewer, they would have to mm -hmm. go through whatever mm -hmm. shenanigans. The well, no. According to this, they have it by right. No. But they only can do it by right. right. They still have to do all the other That's permitting. Maybe, so yes, maybe they have all the they other to go with Channing Beat. I mean, they okay. still had to go through all the hoops in order to do that through Channing Beat. It just happened it was a good fit. But, you know, Yankee Candle would have to do the same thing. Well, I know they'd have to do the same thing, but... Yeah. Um, well, you're saying that they would need to come through the yeah. planning board yeah. anyway. Like board, yeah. board of health. Right, yeah. 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 and so on and so forth. Yeah. Right. Whatever the hell now. Well, no candle fragrance. That's what I'm 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 down with that. Smell beer. Quarter candle. <laughs> yeah, actually, I guess the wine people are all about these wine scented candles. Why not? And they can build a ho build by the looks of it, they can build a hotel there if they're so inclined. Well, that yeah, that wouldn't be the worst. You could probably fill a hotel. I mean, nice. And we have no say over it other than just the standard building. Yeah. yeah. Well, once again, that depends because their um, the bylaw was passed the um, so formula base. So that w does that. Uh, I too? think you got a problem there because this one says it exempts everything. I don't know. No, it's no, I don't think. Yeah. I think the formula oh, base doesn't matter. That. Yeah. But right. that would be as far that you yeah, know. Yeah, it doesn't that, exempt them from it. Yeah, it would not be exempt anymore. from it. No. Well. So if I go back to applicability, this paragraph then goes on to say, nothing, notwithstanding the foregoing to the contrary, if the pertinent regulations applicable to the underlying zoning district district afford, no, that's not the one that I want. But there, there is one that says, essentially, oh, they, these are the regulations and the hell with whatever else it says in the zoning bylaws. Yeah, you go by whichever is more lenient. Whichever is more lenient. Yep. They can choose. They can choose whichever is bylaw they, can they want. They choose to do anything. They have the right to determine. Mm -hmm. That would be something to ask. Right. But that is not what I just said. No. So from a financial perspective, how much are we going to be spending? If we're in arguing oh, the, yeah, <laughs> there's a good point. That's that's what I was I was just getting that's, to. Like the last the true. last one we were talking about the 50 foot, we were arguing very vehemently that 50 feet would be good for the town because it would be help with economic development in the town. So if we're relaxing rules against businesses then that is good for economic development in the town as long as it, but that's a good point, as long as it's clear and it doesn't get us Keep into hiring while it's done. I, I kind of agree with Skip. The buy right is a little scary. You know, the 50 foot is pretty specific and kind of limits to what can and what can't happen. Yeah, this this is the... But like Skip was saying, with the, with the buy right, that that's pretty wide open and, and oh, this, uh, that can be a little bit... Here. This is the sentence or the part of the paragraph that says where the base, this is 4953, where the base zoning regulations of the underlying zoning district differ from the provisions of this section 4950. That's this. Right, whole thing. Mm -hmm. The provisions of section 4950 shall govern. That's it. Right, that's the problem. Yep. So all of the stuff that you did at town meeting, right. out the window. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't read it that way. I wrote it's even broader, that the property owner can use the original zoning regulations or this one. Well, that's the yeah, point. They can choose. They can choose. They can choose. So what I'm saying, but those it. those regulations that you put in, in the, which I wasn't happy with, but now we're basically throwing them out the window. No. Trevor is not answering. Uh, I think I'll, I'll so, answer, Skip. I think the problem with this discussion is that, um, you know, the, these are zoning and planning board questions and not really finance questions. I mean, I, I just don't think it's, um, we don't have all the answers. We're, we're throwing out things. We don't have any idea 
what they mean. So I think, you know, we could talk to a lawyer, we, we could get answers back for you on that. But, but I'm just thinking that those kind of discussions happen at the planning board meetings and zoning board meetings. And I, I'm just not sure. I, I can't sit here as a, as a lawyer and tell you the every, every every article, you know, every sentence and what it means, I, I would rely on our attorneys to do that. So I don't know how much I could add that would, that would really kind of answer the financial implications of these laws. It wasn't what, which you're overseeing. Uh, no, I'm not looking, I'm, I'm following state law. The state law that says every article on town meeting floor needs to have our- Review. Right, you review, but it, but for more mainly for financial implications. I mean, that's really the goal of no. the finance committee. Yes, it is. But. No, it's not. Okay, I'm I won't add any more because I'm not an attorney. So, yeah, I just asked a quick question. Is some of these points that were brought up in that information? be obtained prior to the special town meeting and share. And I, I think, yeah, I think if you have questions, yes, uh, forward them through to the office and we'll, we'll get an answer for you. I mean, but I, but I well, think, I mean, yeah, I mean, that would, that would be better than um, me trying to guess what the, you know, what the law means and which I, I'm not a zoning expert. So I wouldn't know which precedent takes you know, president. I, I know our attorneys have looked at it, and they're they have the well-being of the town in mind. So they, you know, they wouldn't uh, write write a bylaw that hindered us. I think you have to have some things that are by right if you're going to do an overlay district. And we felt these items fit the needs of what we want that business to do, and what we want other businesses to do to drive economic development and tourism in this district and our in our town and bring us some money. I, I just think Skip brought up some good points that just need a little more clarification. That's all. I agree. And I agree. I think it would benefit everybody and, and make, obviously, the uh, considerations for voting and recommending a little bit easier. Yeah. And that was part of my concern. That's why I said I... Myself personally, I'd just like to put this on hold a little bit to get some of that information. That's all. Yeah, I would. Yeah, just I would submit them to the office so we could, you know, send them to the attorney and get an exact answer for you. That would be that would be the best. And I'm only one person on this board, so if, if other right. members mm -hmm. want to move forward for a vote, I'm fine with that. Yep. Yeah, I think. The last question that I've got for the last area is the special permit granting authority, which is the planning board. And that seems to me to be a change from what virtually all of the other parts of the zoning bylaw uh, pretty much give that, that to either the building inspector or it ends up with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess here are the kind of questions, and I've kind of asked these before, but that I'm not trying to be smart here, but uh, in reviewing the application for a special permit, what's the basis? What are the requirements that you're going to use to determine whether or not to grant the permit? Uh, what certification? And I'm going to guess there isn't any certification or education that the planning board has to come to a particular conclusion. No, it's skip, one, skip once again, this is the third time that you've asked that same question. And, and frankly, I'm beginning to feel really insulted by that. I haven't gotten an answer yet. I'm not going to give you well, an answer. In, we in, so you're going to hear it again. Well, but it, you mean, who, why does one person get to decide instead of another person? What, or? what was the purpose in having a why was it changed to have the planning board give this special permit as opposed to ask the select board best. I don't have an answer for that. You can ask Trevor. Okay. Because I, I believe in the qualifications of this planning board. Um, you know, really what's the what are the qualifications that this that the zoning board has? 
you know, what, what kind of, what kind of cred, uh, accreditation do, do, do they have? I mean, I, I believe in this well, planning board and I think that they have the qualifications to research and rely on um, any, any outside counsel they need to, to determine something. So uh, it, just like we've done with marijuana, plan, you know, there's a, the, the select board stepped away from that and we allowed the, um, the planning board to do all special permits for, for that. We, we typically give the building commissioner a fair amount of discretion. Now, I don't know whether the building commissioner has any discretion in this stuff or not, so it may not. Uh, he, but he, I think he would like, for all. No, go ahead. Oh, he, I think he would for all the building requirements, you know, all, all those kind of things that are that are needed. And I think the you know, I think the planning board would, would rely on the building commissioner to answer questions and, you know, guide them a bit on, on, on anything that they, they didn't understand. And then the question is, what's the appeals process you go through? I come to you and I say, I would like a special permit for, for something. And, and you say, you know, no, I'm sorry, you know, for these reasons, you can't have it. What's the appeals process? that I have at that point in time to appeal your decision? Well, I, I think so as all zoning board, right? I mean, they do all, all the appeals, I would imagine, right, for any zoning thing. No, it, it in here, it, it specifies that this is strictly a planning board uh, special permit granting authority. But Period. if it's, if it's counter to the zoning board, we meet with, we've met with those. We, those two boards have met together mm -hmm. because um, if there is a, some change of use, uh, say, like we took off a zoo, somebody says, no, I really want the zoo, um, they're going to have to come to us. We're going to say, no, well, you have to get a variance from the, from the um, DPA, can, can they still we, Board of Health, et cetera. We meet together. We have met together. We might have to meet separately. That's always awkward because it's kind of, well, we, we're not going to do it until they do it. We're not going to do it until they do it. But if we can possibly meet together, those are fairly unusual circumstances, but it certainly happened in the past. I, if, if someplace along the way, the appeal goes to the ZBA before, my, my big concern was that it, you make the decision and I don't like it and I hire a lawyer and go to court. Let's do it. And then you grab a lawyer and by the time we're finished, it's cost the town, it's cost me, but it's cost the town an arm and a leg. And if, if you're saying that, you go through your process, and I could appeal to the ZBA. Right. And if the ZBA agrees with you, then I'm going to have to sit back there and say, do I really want to fight Keep both going. the ZBA and the planning board? Uh, so there would be two two separate boards that arrived at the same. Then I don't have a problem. What, uh, which it's the, this section C ends with subject to evaluating the criteria. Exactly. I think there's, there's bylaws. I think there's a typo there. Have... There's two Bs. There should only be one, I think. One. Subject to the evaluating the criteria in section 5320. So what's, we have... What's 5320? I don't have it with me, but we don't just decide out of our back pocket. We have criteria by which we go, you know, look at the 50, special... 5320 yes. is? And I'm, I'm... I don't know what it is. I didn't know. bring my book, my Bible. We've got our huge... And it's online. Um, but it d does have criteria by which, I mean, I certainly know the site plan review one's a little better. So if you to, give the special, more often. if you give the special permit, it has to be subject to the bylaws of 50. We have, uh, we, we still have a responsibility to the bylaws. We don't just make it up out of okay. our head. Or I don't like the cut of his jib. And, and that's the same thing for this. I mean, as I said, I know the site plan review criteria a little better because we're more likely to run up against that and have run up against that more often. Um, and we haven't we haven't granted that many special permits in recent time, so I'm not as familiar with it. Just because it does invoke a whole lot. I mean, you really got to want it if you're if you're yeah. looking for that kind of special permitting, some change. Um, I, was, I, I think what Skip was trying to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, Skip, was just to uh, make sure that there's some recourse right. if somebody came to you for the the uh, planning board. 
came to you for a special permit and they were denied. Other than going there, straight to the lawyer. Right. Is there something within the town? Is there another step mm -hmm. prior to mm -hmm. hiring a lawyer mm -hmm. and going through the whole court? Mm -hmm. And you're saying that they could appeal to the ZBA? A special permit, I'd have to look at I'd have to look at it. I mean, it seems it feels to me like the last time I, I just can't I can't recall recent experiences of special permitting just because that's not a it's not as common again as site plan review. Um, I want to think I want to say with Frank Morrow and I we ran we ran one together and I I was for some reason John wasn't here and I was even chair of that one. Um, so, but it's that it's been that long. Right. And we yeah. did sit down together, and it was one of those, like, well, if you get the variance, we'll look at the special permit. And if they're like, no, well, we're not going to look at your variance if you don't get, so that we met together. Yeah. And that just made a ton of sense. Um, so that was, but if, if it, it could get, come up. So from the business side of things, I have to be honest, there is a jiggy-jaggy thing, because you can get caught kind of in a never-never land um, between those two. Um, the chances of it being a bad project because you're caught in that that never never land is probably stronger than I, if I I'm trying to remember the project, but the project that Frank and I oversaw, it was a great project. We wanted it to go, yeah. so we made we made an effort in a sense to do that. But if if they want to go back and forth, they can do that, and we've just recently seen some of that too. So the special permit in here is consistent with other parts of the bylaws where there are special permits. It's the planning board that does a special permit. It's the ZBA that does the variance. Right. If there's a variance included right. in this one. And I will say, like, you know, we weren't begging for the um, – we thought that it was good to have the marijuana, for instance, to be honest, mm -hmm. with us. I remember that one very well. I would touch uh, that with a 10-foot pole. I know. <laughs> I, and I don't know if you remember at the time, the composition of our board was very jazzy, but because there were those who were really against marijuana, just period, end of story, um, me kind of at the edge of that, to be honest. And, um, and But we thought it was a seven-person board as opposed to a three-person board, and we thought that that just made it a little bit – there was just a little more discussion and a little more transparency, again, with the discussion around what would happen with marijuana, so I, I, I thought that was a, I thought that was a good move. I uh, I, I was stayed really quiet though because I really <laughs> I didn't want it, but I think it was a good move. I think it took a little bit off the select board in that regard. We haven't had much business, so every time we we're like the kiss of death, we give them a permit and then they. Okay. All right. Anybody else have comments on this um, article or questions? We want to submit the questions to Trevor. Well, I, I to, think to the planning board. And I think it's fair enough. We're going to we're meeting on this again on the thirtieth. Yeah. Right, so there's right. a, there's another public hearing, which I think is probably the proper Continuous. location for these questions to be brought forward. Continuance. Um, is it a public hearing? Yeah, yeah there's another public hearing because so there, was, there was some the problem with publishing this. Um, but I think that's the proper spot for that. Um, I think it's a good one. <coughs> so then we should bypass any further discussion, right? Right? We have an open article, so our open I withdraw motion. the motion. Who seconded it? Do you remember? Um, John. Would you like to second the withdrawal? I'll withdraw. All right. Um, so that is withdrawn. We will revisit that on our meeting right before right. Uh, on the fourth. Right. Fourth, I think it is. If I remember correctly, the special meeting is yes. Right. There we go. Um, yeah. We have a motion for Article 11. I will make a motion to approve Article 11. I'm okay. the assumption that one of those Berkshire breweries? Yes, that's part of That's it part is, of this whole it's thing. One in, it's okay. kind of part and parcel. They're basically the same. I'm not that sure yeah. how we ended up with those. But Does anybody else have I'm just wait on that. questions on the... The only question um, I have is I'd like to follow up on Bob Decker's concern. Yep. His concern is that if you're going to establish an overlay district, he says, why not go down to the old Deerfield Country store? Keep going. 
right. and well, all the way uh, to what the about the side. thing on the left-hand side, mm -hmm. farm thing? Mm -hmm. Make it contiguous. And then you have the uh, butterfly place. <laughs> yeah. Butterfly. Yeah. Every, every no, absolutely. Water, you should have no, the absolutely. same opportunity, <laughs> the same policy that John has. Yeah. You know, you should turn around and say, well, if you're going to make this an entertainment district, and if this is good for the town, then push it right up to Cheapside well, Bridge. John, you know, just speaking for the flood board, I know Trevor's still here, but I mean, they said this multiple times, and I think Trevor used the term, we'd rather walk before we run. And, you know, to, to try this out and see, it's much easier to expand than it is that's to true. retract. And I think, I think that's really the reason. Um, All right, well, and, yeah. and the only concern that I have on this is it going to be considered spot zoning when you take the barbecue place and then yeah. another place just mm -hmm. north of the barbecue place and it's one little thing discolored all the way around but it's not part of it it's not part of the district oh, we had a lot so that, that and i'm not sure how that works it doesn't work i don't have any hard feelings one way or the other right. i just want to make sure it's fair and and we right. avoid the yeah. spot zoning right and i would hate to have them come in and say well we're going to tear this down and we're going to put a hotel here well, you can put a hotel in by right. Didn't you see that in there? That's, that's, that's my point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it would have to have setbacks from the edge, so it would be a really skinny tall hotel. Well, and it wouldn't be that tall because other... we have right. height restrictions. Oh, there we go. Right. Two-room hotel. Well, they can get out and they put it down and put a pool on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. But I do think, I think the spot zoning concern, you, you just don't want to go around town picking. And that, it, yeah. if you look at it, that's a little bit what it looks like. I know uh, that. That's, and so that's my concern. That is very. I think it's a very legitimate concern, and I think. Um, you go right through the bank and. I, I, and again, that maybe I go back to John and say John's point and say this is not over yet. Um, that this is, you know, this, the, about the zoning, the Center mm -hmm. Village zoning, CBRD, C1, like that we really just need to keep looking at it, that we don't know how this is going to play out um, in terms of who's going to build what where, when, what kind of, what kind of, um, what kind of stir we're going to get with this. So that way we kind of see as we go along, certainly that property across from Channing, that's the jazzier property. That's the one we're all going to be watching most closely, I think. Yeah. And who knows, if, now that they can put something there, who's going to be interested in that property. I, I appreciate and understand the uh, comment about walk before we run. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we can uh, always go back and review right. and what then, the data yep. and then if we can yeah, to uh, expand down the road. It would be nice to be able to do it all at once. But if we do run into problems in the center of town, uh, that puts us in a very difficult position, I think, to step back from something that's already been passed and you know expanded larger than, than what we had intended at the beginning. So uh, the approach might not be a bad approach. I am, too, a little concerned about people considering this uh, spot zone. Mm -hmm. I would definitely be a little careful of that. I don't know if something uh, some way address that. Mm -hmm. well. I think we need to look at it. I mean, you look at some of those properties right up. He was talking right up to the cheap side. There are properties for sale up along there. Right. Those properties may become much more appealing to some buyer if they think they, they're able to develop some in some way. I think we've got to yeah. consider that. Expand. And then right back it's down. Like the way it's set up is easy to expand, too. Next year, you add six more numbers to the house. Right. And they can always apply for a permit anyway now. It won't, won't be automatic. So. I, I am curious as a point of information. Um, so what do we got why a large, water? essentially, wilderness tract was put in the tourism overlay? I and mean, it seems like normally when one thinks of tourism, one thinks of people visiting things that are already there. I think it, it is, it's been for sale. I mean, they, they had a big sign up there for a long time. They're looking for something to go in there. If there's going to be development in Deerfield, that's, that's a kind of a good place for it to go. 
I mean, if it's not going to go in the center village, that's, that's going to happen. The proximity, the all five and ten, uh, it's just it's a kind of a prime opportunity for somebody. So this has not been voted also, right? You're going to meet the 30th? We did vote this. We voted on the verbiage. They had to be two separate, two separate parts, two separate bylaws. I know. You're right. We haven't. What we so did we was have we, not. we voted to change it to include right. the 35 and 168. Yes. The map is what we did not. Yeah, we, right. we, we just voted to change As it. We didn't vote. It has to be like Correct. meet the public hearing. Right. I don't think we need to wait, so I'd like a make to make a motion to approve it. I don't know why we need to wait. Right. Unless you want to include the whole motion. 5 and 10. Huh? Any further discussion on this item? Uh, we need a second, right? No, we had a second from oh, we before, did. Okay. and you're just okay. not withdrawing your motion, right? You, you you made the original motion. Did I? Okay. Yeah. I would still like to see you know, the final product before we vote it. But that's just me. I would tend to agree. If we put our an oath on hold, we can do this too. Yeah. Because we've got to have a meeting before anyway. town meeting anyway. And then that way, you have the opportunity to look good again, pressing all the votes. There you go. Okay, so I'm just thinking about the mechanics of this. The person who made the motion does not want to withdraw the motion, therefore we need to vote. Oh, no, 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 no. If, if you want to wait, if we want to wait, discussion says we want to wait, so I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> we pressured you into it, huh? No, I got it. Would you like to withdraw your phone? Certainly. Okay. Let's move We're on. We're easy today. Article 12, solar energy. We did not vote this, right? No. We yeah. Okay. But this one, y'all did vote. Yes, this one's good. That's okay. all right. So anybody like to make a motion on Article 12? It's better. It's good. Uh, I move that we uh, <laughs> uh, approve the Article 12 for the bylaw amendment as modified by the planning board. I'll second it. Any discussion? Would you, when it comes to, we split this up and do three pieces, small, medium, and large. Uh, extra large. There have been discussions for some time about solar facility at the town dump, and we had a committee. What's happened to that? Anybody know? I don't know. Every time I look it up, I was like solar on the town website. That's usually what comes up first. I mean, when I'm trying to find this, I yeah. <laughs> I'd open is, Apple Find. It is, it is, I don't know. We're, we're waiting right now for um, for EverSource to do their calculations. But yeah, we have a company we've secured and moving forward. But we, we're just waiting on EverSource, which is taking forever. Literally. And, and it's, no it's, it's very reluctant. Right. Eversource yep. is very reluctant on these things. We found that yes. to be true. Yes. Huh. Yep. We got. Oh. Yep. But we're very close. <laughs> we have a good plan and, and a good good company picked out. So hopefully it works. All right. Do you have a question? No, no, no. Not on this. Anybody else has comments on this? I just said, it, would you? The uh, the small one. It, this is what? How does that work? Right? If I want to put solar at my house, I can put it on the roof, assuming that. And there's and that just by right. By right, I don't even need. Do I need to get a permit, other than a building permit? Or correct. Okay. And, but now, if I want to put, for some reason or other, the roof even isn't situated right or it's not going to do enough. It's not going to do enough, and I want to put a standalone. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of walk me through. What What are you looking for for the approval process? Well, you have to have between twenty five and thirty four thousand dollars to make this improvement. <laughs> Just saying, it, that's why they're not popping up everywhere. Let's see, let's see. That, that is somebody who has some outlay and I got fifteen dollars. So what? Yeah, you're 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 keep saving. Um, not even the down payments. Yeah. So they're really, they're not doing this without 
deep consideration. That's, I, I'm not right. being glib about this. I'm saying these are people who are really thinking about this down the road. And um, and that's just for the one that we're we're talking about. They're going to get more expensive, obviously, yeah. the bigger, more bigger they go. But your 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 roof is covered, or so you you need, and you've got a parcel of your land that you could put uh, solar panels on, and then you could actually power your home um, through EverSource um, through the grid, and so you put it up. Is there a limit that the, either the state or Eversource has that says you can't generate more than this number of kilowatt hours? Yeah, whatever it's it's that, that kilowatt. Would say, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's 10 kilowatts. Yeah, yeah 10 kilowatts. And that's, and there, that's an, right. Yeah, and that's then they say after that you have to you have to uh, you know make an appeal and you have to get to get it. That's a power plant then. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not even so much a power plant. They just don't really want to go into that business with you, right? They, they're not looking to to lose all that business all at once. That's no. what they're trying to figure out. I don't know. No. That's my cynical perspective no. on this. But um, they're still metering it. They're still doing the work, so they get to call the shots. Okay. And and your job in there would be to look at this thing to see if it is reasonably attractive or it makes nope. sense or what is so well, that's the big thing is the setbacks are what we're looking at is i mean what we're legislating here is setbacks and size um setback and what size okay and height um and um but other than attractive not, uh, we had that conversation about quaint the other night and a quaint solar array and what you know what do people and it is one of my things i think one person on our board is making a very strong point. You're telling people what they can and can't put up in their home, in their on their property. And uh, if I put up a barn, well, that's no. I don't have to ask your permission. Or I don't fence. need to. I don't need or a fence or all these things because those are all things that we're kind of used to our neighbors putting up. At this point, this is an this looks like is an apparatus. It looks like it doesn't look like all those other things that we. We were getting used to, yeah. And so until I, my, you know, until we get super used to it. On the other hand, there are people who feel really strongly this is what we've got to move to. Yeah. And so there are people on our board who feel very strongly that this this is small, that this should be more. Um. So we did end up voting um with the smaller, the 660 number, um instead of a larger number, um. Certainly, again, we can revisit it if people start to feel like that's just restrictive and that because they can come to us with a larger. Now, there's then they have to get a, a they have to get a special permit, yeah. and then we look at we look at then you know we we alert the neighbors they're allowed to come to the the, yeah. the hearing. We we look at the you know the impact to the neighborhood. We all that kind of stuff, and we end up going into that land that we were just talking about just not so many minutes ago. And, yeah. and so that's where I think some people on our board are feeling like, well, that's a lot to go through for for a solar array, which is a you know positive move for the earth and everything else. And I don't mean to be glib. I'm, I'm not. I'm not all. Um, and one person is going to come to us, and they're going to go, I have a field. I'm putting it way back there, mm -hmm. and we uh, we we alert the butters. We look at the property. There's minimal impact to any neighbors. The neighbors are fine with it. Boom, done. It is going to come the moment when a neighbor says, "That's I don't know what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. That's not in keeping with our neighborhood," and then that is going to be really awkward. And I think that that's, that's, well, that's the what I'm kind of thing that we're that's what we're paid to. Well, I, paid. I can even think of an example. Suppose somebody on a historic property in Old Deerfield. Yep. They might and, not want it to look like something out of the jet. And then, yeah, <laughs> and then you would have a legitimate claim to uh, yeah. the neighborhood. Absolutely. My the, the last comment, I guess it's a comment rather than a question, is: uh, Is this any different than building a garage? No. Nope. So why don't we just let or what? Well, that's what people on our committee let let the uh, let it fly. Let the building inspector. Approves this, like he approves the garage or he approves the house. Or uh, certainly, that's a if they want to come in and build something that's bigger than 660. Then oh. that's different. That's and he says that's out of my hands. You go talk to the planning board. Right. Well, that's that's what we're that's <laughs> yeah. what this is. Right. 
So right. 660 is by right. They can do it. And, and he, he just said, okay, so you're not involved at all in that. Oh, okay. All right. No. Up to, up to 660 square feet, it's by right. Okay. And anybody can place that as long as it falls within guidelines or if they're saying okay. setbacks or not. Some mm -hmm. of those setbacks are like 10 feet from the side of your property. Just line. like your garage. Some of them might be sold like 30 feet okay. from the road. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, you have a, you have, you can, you could have a situation where some people don't like ground mounted solar panels uh, because they, to some, they don't look very appealing. The other concern is like when you have medium and large uh, solar systems, the, the town has an opportunity to can... monitor those and make sure that they're done right and kept up. Mm -hmm. And that with a 660, you also run into a situation where uh, if you have a neighbor that puts it up and then doesn't do the upkeep, that can become pretty ugly. And number two, the block view or whatever, and some people may think that can have a mm -hmm. negative uh, effect on the property value. Uh, the state, once again, the State Department of Utilities. Uh, it, those are 10 kilowatt hours, which basically equates to the 660 square feet of, of by right. So uh, it just, it, as, as the consultant for the planning board even mentioned, that it makes sense for the town to align with that as far as our bylaws. And that's how the 660 came about. So. Uh, and again, once again, that's by right, and whatever happens with it, happens with it, you know, on, on their on their property. That's 660 square feet. The average unit is two by four, that's eight square feet. How did they come up with 660 square feet to authorize 82 and a half? <laughs> Instead of an even number, this is why how do you I, get a half right. one? I, I think Mr. Upton touched on that, but that basically equates to the 10 kilowatt power. Right, 10 output. kilowatt hour, right. So you got to have 660 square feet, which means you can have up to 82 and a half. Right. There you go. And, and you can have it up, the to, eyes all the time, up to 10 yeah. kilowatt hour. They're going to change size again. It's not, size, a, yeah. it's not it's a required. Theoretical. You don't have to <laughs> Right. It's not <laughs> no, Julie's point is that we really we we can't look at that. That's the kilowatt thing, which was old. Our old thing was all about that, and that that technology had changed. It's slowing down in terms of changing, but it's going to keep changing. And they're becoming more efficient. More efficient. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. They can have less units. Yep. Well, that that may happen because it or it should it's already happen. Is they become more efficient, mm -hmm. the units actually get. Smaller. So now that's why we're going right. with the, the square footage and not any wattage. Well, I just want to see one cut in half and see how it's going to work. And that's the vision of people having the right to put roof mount solar panels. Hey, John, if you want to go out and buy one, I'll come down and cut it in half for you. <laughs> you will. All right. You, Anybody else have any comments on the solar bylaw? No. Just that there was a concern about uh, car, the Canopy, carport. So. You know, I've never been able to express this very well. I'm going to try it one more time. There are rules in here about ground mounted that say if you put a large ground mounted installation in, then I have to give you money, the town money, so that if I run off, the town can take it down. The argument that if it's on my roof, I don't have to do that, is that I'm unlikely to abandon my building. You can build canopies and there's no limit on the canopies because there's it's not defined right so i could build canopies or carport large carport yeah so carport but what's large the between the canopy array, and, our and then array. abandon it and there's no requirement that that's the only i feel like it's a loophole that's not um properly Clear. plugged i don't think it's Bad and not to worry about my like, head taking down the whole bylaw i know <laughs> but, but it wasn't really my that yesterday because i I feel like in the letter of the law, I mean, you could you could see some abuse there. The spirit of the law is really good. Think about it. Yep. You got it. You got your roof mount. 
Oh, and I have a carport. We we'll, we'll love those carports. We're thinking about putting a bunch of those up by us. And um, for, our, you know, anybody who's got a car in winter, all you want is just to keep the snow off at yeah. best, you know. So you, And then you put, now you've got these carport courts, you put a solar array over the top of it. In the parking lot. And you it, it'd be great. That's great, yeah. I, now I went um, to Amherst. Everybody, if you've been to Amherst in the last three, I don't know what, when they put those up. I feel like suddenly I was like, going. Oh, where? <laughs> lots, they just, they just All over you. On our yeah. university drive. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But it was funny because by about the fourth time I passed, didn't even notice it. And those are huge. Those are huge, and how wonderful for all those students parking in that parking lot that that snow is all, I'm imagining they've got a new snow <laughs> removal system given how it's going to move and whatever all, but but that, that, that dual purpose for all those cars over there, I, I just think it's super smart. So I agree. I think it's a, in the spirit of the law, it's brilliant. In the word of the law, I'm a little, I had some, I had some hesitation. I, I know Bruce I did. I totally yesterday. support it. I just feel like it's, it's a loophole. It's a buy thing right thing right now. I know. Point. It's a little bit like going back to the accessory apartments where we talked about, sorry, this is a little bit of a digression, but when we we're talking about an accessory apartment over a garage, but what about you build the accessory apartment and throw a car, you know, in the carport on the side, and then I start to feel like, oh, that looks like two family, you know, like in other words, the, the spirit of the law is one thing, but if you're sticking with a letter of the law and you see some abuse, that's that's when it's kind of wording gone. wording like that matters though. It does. Um, yeah. I remember several decades ago when I lived in Chicago, uh, a firm started a, a free weekly newspaper that they never printed, just so that they could put up newspaper vending machines, which were essentially billboards on the public sidewalk, mm -hmm. because there was a loophole about that. You could have advertising on your newspaper vending machine, and so. They basically rented out advertising space on their never filled vending machine. When they're free, when nobody and, ever right. took and the so, paper. You, know, you do have to pay attention to this. Yeah. <clears throat> the spirit of the law is not what people will follow. Well, maybe we make a, I don't know, we look at it so that we make a, some sort of, um, we make some sort of regulation about the size of the carport so that it doesn't turn into another, like this canopy, so it doesn't turn into another. I mean, they're very expensive right now. Well, We've had this loophole for a while. People are going to be able to do it, and nobody's just, doing it. You know, if everybody's going to follow the spirit of law, that'd be one thing. But we know there's going to be a few people out there that aren't going to, and they're going to try to use it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and at least with the medium and the large, the town has a method of enforcing. Mm -hmm. uh, with by right, though, so, you know, the town and neighbors don't have any recourse really mm -hmm. unless unless they spend some money and go to court. Are there so, any restrictions on the size of carport that you can build now from the building inspector? I mean typically someone wouldn't build more than a two two car carport. I mean Right. Well I've seen one? three car carports really? too, yeah. Well, the so, one on your uh, oh well yeah, I mean but right. for residential. Right. And then, you know, how many solar panels could you put on that, and would that be adequate, or is it, why would someone do that? Wouldn't right. it just well, make would they be able sense? To support the wouldn't it make more, yeah, more, more sense to put it on your roof? There's several things that come into play. That obviously, you yeah. know, maybe the research or maybe the property about. I think it's worth revisiting, revisiting as we keep looking at it. A little asterisk by there. <laughs> For our own purposes, right. but I think yeah. before we start to see that some start popping up in various mm -hmm. places, we figure that one. You looked out by the transfer station at the condos out there. They've got garages. Those garages, the four car garages, and they go you know one unit, one yeah. garage for. So you could have that situation in a carport and mm -hmm. put roof mounted. Yeah, and, and I guess I'm not concerned about that particularly. Right. It's worth keeping well, track of them. It may be a lot more expensive, too, to, to put that because there are weight limitations. So it may end up being cheaper to do roof mounts in the canopy, so it may not be as likely for someone to do it on the canopy. I haven't looked at the rules recently, but when we were building our solar panels, you actually got a bigger subsidy from the state if you built, um, if it was integral to the building. And so if you built this, like, carport thing where it was the solar canopy, you got a bigger subsidy from the and if you, but that was like, then, it, yeah, I know, but those know are going to change all the time. But that it was cheaper that than, or you had a better subsidy than if you put it out in your field. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Or on the roof. 
Yes. Yeah, because it, it reduces the amount of hardscape. Yep. Like it's, it's just a loophole that someday <laughs> when you're fixing yeah. this again. Well, when the cost of the thing is, when the cost of solar starts to come down, because the cost of solar is still that's in, you are you are taking the long view when you're investing. Because you're gonna get you're gonna get it back, well, but it's a long view, mm -hmm. and so that's <laughs> she says she's sick. fingers crossed. But uh, right, but um, so I think when the price starts to come down and the long, it's other people without that long view right. are going to enter into that market, then we're going to, that's when we're going to start to see it. So for the time being, I think we have a reprieve. I think we'd see solar everywhere if it wasn't so expensive. Yeah. And I think there's, there's right. leasing, and I think you're going to see more people looking at leasing. But, but not at the residential. Because so leasing, do you think it's coming at the residential? You want to see one? Where? 76 Point Road. My daughter. And she's leasing it to the. She's leasing it from. It was a company that put the panels on her roof. Yeah. And she's leasing the system. Oh, she's leasing this. She's leasing it. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant they were. So she why, why did she decide to lease instead of purchase? Sorry, couldn't. Why did she decide to lease instead of purchase? Oh, God. Ah, there's no, but that's I, I guess what I was thinking was they're, they're you would be like leasing, leasing it. it. They're not leasing the, the power. Yeah. She's leasing the, the equipment, and I, yeah. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. That, and that's a, but that's a good business. I mean, that's a good. Yeah. That's smart business too. It seems to me at the 20, at the end of 20 years, it hurts. Which yeah, means something you're like that. Tear it down and put another one up. Right, 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 right. Yeah. No, but I'm, what I'm saying is that nobody's putting it on their roof and making money off of it. No, no. I mean that's no. not happening. That kind of leasing. All right. Is anybody else have anything to say that has to do with some approving? Sorry. Are the leasing companies required to put up a deposit? I imagine they are. If I'm going right, to put one up in my room. The huh? size limit. Yeah. At the same price as the car deal. I mean, that was one. Well, not the roof. I'm sorry. Not on the roof. Standalone. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any further discussion? Alex? Yes. No. Nope. All right. So it has been moved and seconded that the Finance Committee approve the Deerfield Zoning Bylaw on solar energy. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. John Upton, aye. John Pereski, aye. John Pachorek, aye. Julie Chalpin, aye. Jim Cambia, aye. Uh, Skip Olmstead, I'm going to abstain. I may change my mind before town meeting, but I'll take a little look at it. Allison yeah. Vanderbilt and I. All right, so we got six zero one that passes. I think those are all the planning board related We're good. articles. Yes, thank you. Right. Yes. I have a question about yeah. land in town. I, the, the, maybe John, maybe you can answer this. Is the lot at the bottom of Sugarloaf? It used to be a, like Little League baseball. Off -field. Is that still being used? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What are the plans for it? Have you heard anything? Who uses it, Skip? <coughs> the the field? I don't Great. know, to be honest. I don't even know who controls it. It's on it in a long time. Okay. Yeah. You're talking about the baseball field. The ball field. field. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I would somebody check with Sue and find out. She could tell you, I'm sure. It's a softball field. Well, it's, not well, it's, it's a six well, little league, so it was a little league. Yeah. Little league. Yeah. But it's got the it's a small field. Yeah. The dugouts. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. They played on it. Families yeah. are out there quite often with kids and you know practicing and that. So I haven't seen a game there for a while. I haven't either. But, so I'm not. I'm not that might be COVID. Right. <laughs> How many years ago did this happen? All right. Well, your, um, your brother was down there. <laughs> My brother played there, but that is a very long time ago. Well, let's, <laughs> okay. nice let's, let's move on with the business of the finance committee. Um, let's go back to the beginning of the article. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, article one, two, three, four. We've already voted. Article yes. five. We've already voted. Yes. Article six yes. is new. How much money are we talking about? That's exactly my question. I have I didn't even know that that was on here until did I. I opened this up tonight. So 
Trevor might have an idea. Trevor might. I have a little bit of background. Before we discuss it. Sure. Would anybody like to move this article, please? I'm, I'm moved oh, that we approve Article 6 about South the Church building repairs. Okay. It's for it's discussion. Tough to it's tough to do it without a dollar figure. Well, we'll discuss yeah, that when we discuss it. So we can discuss it. So it's second. Moved. Do we have a second? We have a second from Allie. I know right. to prove it. So the big question we all have is how much money? And nobody knows. There's a second and, one. And the answer to that is they don't know. Yeah. Let, me, let me tell you what I know about it. Okay. They asked Bruce and myself to go down there and volunteer to do some work. We went in there. I just made out the list, material list today of what we're going to do for electrical. We had a conversation with a building inspector and a wiring inspector to see what they would accept over there. Because from our viewpoint, there's enough problems over there that you could close down the place and never open it up. Or you can turn around and say, yeah, there are acceptable wiring methods and you can correct things. And so what we're doing is we're planning on going over there replacing emergency lights, exit lights, uh, exterior lights as necessary to try and get it done. I understand that they've also got somebody working on Deerfield Academy to put in handicap ramps to go down the thing and fix the stairs in the front of that section to the right side of the church. Because the guy was down there to look at it and he fell through one of the stairs. So they've obviously got to fix that and make that handicap accessible. What they're trying to do is move the seniors from out under the tent over to there at some point, but when, I don't know. And right now they're trying to get contractors to volunteer to do certain things, but meanwhile, allow the town to pay for the materials to do this. So what happens is somebody's collecting all those materials lists, and that's what they're gonna try and push through town meeting. Do they know how much? No, I don't even know what the electrical is yet. We don't know what they're gonna get from Deerfield Academy. So. It's something I think we're just going to have to look at when the time comes, and that won't be until 10 minutes before our town meeting. That's all I can tell you. So More you information than that. They will have a town. They will have a dollar value because they can't vote this without a dollar value. And and this is for the purposes of using it as a senior center. Using it as yeah. a temporary senior center for next three, four years, or whatever. Okay. Somebody's got to make a decision on that other than me. I'm only the volunteer at the bottom of the food chain that doesn't get paid. And I don't mind that because I always try and do whatever I can to help the different uh, things in town. So we're not going to have a figure on that until I doubt if they'll even be in print. But that's well, what I know it about it. It just seems to make sense for me. Me anyways, to just table this until until before yeah, the meeting, so we get a number. Let's have some discussion now, though. Yeah, um, I hate for it to get in the way, but so it doesn't come bite us in the behind later. Is it something that has to go by the capital planning committee? You know, to find a repair versus capital. I don't know. I'd like to see it through. Don't misunderstand me, but I, so I don't want us to want us trying to find get somebody to build the handicap ramps, which are necessary in order to get into the building. The building is basically a flat surface building on the inside, and it's fairly good. And if you go in there, I was impressed with some of the areas that they have in there. Like, for example, you've got the back room uh, towards this side. You've got a fireplace in there. The fireplace is blocked off, and yet you open up some of the doors, and all of a sudden they've got office space there. Turn a switch on, a couple of fluorescent lights come on. A couple of 20 amp heavy duty circuits in there. They've even got tape dispensers, uh, staplers, probably paper in there, and cabinets up there so that they can do some work there. So some of it is good and some requires absolutely no work. I understand they're going to put in one brand new handicapped bathroom unisex so that they can use men and women who have problems can go in there and use it. The other bathrooms that they got look like junk, but they're not going to touch them. And if somebody wants to use a bathroom, they can go and use the bathroom, but it's not handicap accessible, but they will have one that they're planning on. 
there's an issue with the hood. The hood is a, uh, a typical old uh, hood, but it doesn't meet the current latest requirements. And yet, if they want to bring it up to the fullest standard, you're talking several thousands of dollars. And the way around that is to turn around, put in electric uh, range instead of having gas, and they're looking at not even tying gas in. But So there are a lot of options, and I don't know what all the options are now. All I know is at least they're working on it. They're trying to do something, trying to keep the senior center in town if they can, and that's what they're looking at. If we aren't able to come up with a figure, if the town can't come up with a figure for town meeting, they're going to have to. Well, I mean, is, put is there a limit, right? I would think that they'd, they'd give you a ballpark figure, just like with any other capital project or, or repair project. You have an idea maybe about what it'll cost. And that's if they say $25,000 and it turns out that that's not sufficient, can we use uh, the reserve fund for additional funding to get us through until... Not, not with a capital, not with a spe uh, special article. If it was an omnibus bar budget article, like if you wanted to spend some money, let's say out of the town office building expense account, mm -hmm. and overspend that, and then get something from the reserve fund, yes. It would seem like it would make some sense because I can't imagine that they're going to have something that there's there are too many small things that need to be done. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, and, and but we need to be able to come back. A month or two from now, an additional five thousand bucks or ten thousand dollars, rather than waiting until we can have a town meeting, and we can use the reserve fund instead. If, Aren't there if, a couple if, of ones that we voted a couple of years ago with thirty thousand to relook at the thing? Well, yes, that was a feasibility study, and and that's still sitting there. It hasn't been. Uh, I don't think any of it's been spent, or maybe just a small portion of it has. I can't. Julie, didn't didn't you guys spend it when you did the four buildings here? No, no, because yeah. there was a, a buildings assessment. There was a church building assessment account and a, and a town buildings assessment account. And we spent all of the town buildings assessment account, but not all like of the a little bit assessment. out of the church. Yeah, not very yeah. much. So those are, those are, you know, purposes are different. It's not for repair work. So that would be, um, have to be separate. Between now and Two and a half weeks from now, can you figure out how we can set it up so that we've got some flexibility? Well, I, like I said, I think I think your only option would be if you if you needed more money than what you're going to request at town meeting, um, spend the remainder of it out of the town building's maintenance account with the idea that, that that might be overspent. And that would be at, at Kevin. You'd have to ask for Kevin's permission to do that. But I would think that that would be uh, the most the plausible uh, thing to do if, if we needed it. And now we've got the maintenance fund from the uh, senior center also. There's maintenance money in there for maintaining that building, cleaning and stuff like that. And yes. Yeah. Yes. As, as a matter so of fact, some of, some of that can Kevin build some too. of that into the budget. That's correct. John also brought a very, very good point. I think you're going to have to notify uh, the Capital Improvement Committee and have this walk through the Capital Improvement Committee. The sooner the better. And at that point in time, uh, I know we've been working very hard to uh, build that capital improvement Fund. But here you go, you know, your emergency situation, and I hate to say it, but that may be another option yeah. uh, for for some of the funding. Yeah, look at the money they got six or eight hundred thousand dollars. We've got plenty of money. Well, they're, yeah, they're, they're down around seven hundred, I think. Oh, well, only seven hundred thousand. Yeah, okay. That's about right. But you think about what you have coming down for expenses, and that's that's part of the reason why we've well, been trying to put that money away, possibly for situations like this. Three years ago, you had not a penny. You're doing pretty good. We're doing right, a great we're, job. We're, right. You guys are doing a great job. The Don't let it go to your head, but you are doing a great job. The improvement committee is working hard. There's I know. some good, yeah. good team members there. So, uh, but I, I don't know how this needs to be arranged, but uh, Jack Davey uh, was the chair of that committee 
and still is at the moment. And I think uh, I think you should be notified about this, so there could be a posting, so there could be a meeting uh, established for the capital improvement committee uh, to review this article. Because I didn't know this article was going to be here either. Uh, I would have said something earlier, obviously. So I don't know if the select board needs to do that, but. Uh, I think that needs to be done as soon as possible. Can I add, can I add to it? I yes. think the capital planning bylaw, if it's to a building, it has to be more than $25,000 for the capital planning committee to look at. I, I think I, memory serves right, me right. I'm trying to remember, and I think you're right, John. I think so, it's like 25000 well, it, it may not be applicable in this case. Right, right. right but right. it could be, too. So that, Yeah, that's it right. could be, right. Well, well, you want seven hundred thousand. Right. <laughs> what I want to avoid is having work start, and uh, somebody comes and says, "Well, we spent all the money, and we're going to need a town meeting before we can go any further." Uh, so, meanwhile, we've got <laughs> the seniors sitting out there and uh, in the tent, in in the tent <laughs> under yeah, the snow. Bring you can't have like, that. Yeah. yeah it, and that's why I say you, you need to move this forward as quickly yeah. as possible. And uh, obviously, if you get some dollar amounts here, I, I find it hard to believe you're going to be able to do a whole lot, even with all the volunteer help in that. Just materials nowadays now, I find it hard to believe that you're going to be able to do a whole lot for less than $25,000. So. Yeah, good night, dear. How about if we move them in with a the library? Oh, uh, there you go. How about if we move the selectman's office over there <laughs> and move the seniors over in here? The in the tent. In the tent, yeah. Sound good? But, but and once again, I'm just saying that the, <coughs> the capital improvement fund may be uh, available, and I can't speak for the committee, but at least to be able to tap that for some of the money. I'm not saying all of the money, but some of the money to help out. Well, ho hopefully we'll have free cash certified right. by town meeting. And if not, we're not going to. So if that's having a town meeting. Keep your fingers crossed. Right. Um, I submitted for free cash before the end of August. Um, Mm -hmm. And I've been notified by DOR that they will not certify it until they know that we have money in our hands from both the MVP grants that we've requested reimbursement for. And I watch it every day. Um, he said that he's gone through our numbers. He said everything looks great. He's just waiting for us to say we've got the money in hand. Um, so uh, hopefully that'll happen soon. Otherwise, we... I don't know how we pay these unanticipated bills. Well, then the question is, how do we pay for it if we don't have that certified well, free cash? We right. don't. We, until we, we have do it. And we have free cash. Yes. But we do have the ability to, Got there is other there. funds that we can yeah, use. Exactly. Which is the discussion we need to have. That's what it yeah. should Yeah. It could be an option with a combination of other funds. Yes. That's all. And I'm only speaking for myself. I can't speak for the... Capital Improvement Committee. Obviously, that would have to be reviewed. Would you like to go out and have a coffee after this? We've got to get you a quote. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds good. So, the way, and we're not going to vote this because we're not going to dollar value, right? But the way it's worded is, is on purpose transfer from available funds, not from free cash because they want well, they'll have to modify that, that one way or the other. Yeah. Well, and I think that's just generally, I mean, because they use that on all of the unanticipated. Yeah. yeah, and I think you're right. You're, it's because we don't know. Um, I hope I added so, a little clarity to the mud. Yes, very helpful. So what I'm hearing is that if free cash is available, the best source would be from free cash. I'm just trying to get this straight in yeah. mind. Yeah. Uh, another possible source would be the capital stabilization fund, and that fund is available now without having to have free cash certified. So there are other funds available. Correct. Mm -hmm. Although it's in this article, they're not noting that a quantum vote is required, so I'm not sure if that was necessary for them to post that. I, I don't know those rules. 
so yeah it would well be. you might uh this has to be posted by friday or actually by monday i think technically but by friday uh two weeks two weeks prior to the town meeting uh, so if it does need a right quantum they may i don't know what it needs to be in there I know at town meeting, if it needs to come, we need to say so, but I don't know whether we have to specify it in the uh, yard. Okay. So, but you can check with Jen and see what the... And then the other comment that has come up is that it should probably also get some funding from a source that can be plussed up from the reserve fund. So, is it what? that can be plussed up from the reserve fund if it runs over so that we don't run into the situation that Skip mentioned. So, you know, maybe most of it comes from free cash or stabilization or whatever, but some of it should also come from the municipal, the building maintenance or whatever from, from one of Kevin's funds. So that, or is it eligible for um, GPA funds? I would argue that it is. And I think that that would be a really good place to go because we have that money in here. Somebody um, but it would have to go through the PCA. Yeah, Somebody should the take a fund than you have in the capital improvement yeah. fund. Somebody should take a hard look at that. I really, I, I would advocate for that. I don't know who does that. I don't know how you get it through. We should have kept um, Rachel. She's on the CPA committee, too. She is. Um, I don't know how you get it through CPA, because that's all set up for annual town meeting, not for a special town meeting. However, there's there's a certain portion of the CPA funds that are sitting in a right, aside. that are set aside that haven't been designated for a project or for a reserve, and so those are sitting there. And it, and if we vote to use any of that, we can vote to do that before we submit for um, the, submit the tax recap to, to set the tax re rate. Now, how that how that gets submitted to the the CPC and and what process they have to follow, I don't know, but I'm just saying it can be done. You can vote that, uh, but it has to be done before we set the tax rate. So if we were, if this were to transfer from CPA funds, we would have to have the CP the CPC CPC meet. Correct. It has to qualify, right? It ha would yeah. have to qualify, I and I, I don't know what. So in order worth, to qualify, worth looking at it. Um, it has to be. A, I don't know the exact wording, but I've looked at this a bunch. It has to be like historical significance, and it does not have to be like on the state's historical register. All you have to do is go to the town historical commission. And have them say yes. This is a building that has historical importance. Right now. I think that's pretty um, open. I don't think that would be a problem. And that they have already said that they would be open to doing that. Oh, they have. Okay. Um, not not like in this emergent case. I was talking to them six months ago about it, and they're like, oh yeah, that, that's kind of a number. Um, the okay. um, but it, it would have to go through the committee. Of those. Somebody needs to take the ball to bring it up with them. Yeah. I, I, Trevor or Brenda or I'm Casey. going to visit with Trevor um, and and find out what what we need to do because Casey is not here this week. Or I'll visit oh, right. and maybe first and, right. and okay. I'll do that tomorrow. Right, yeah. According to this last uh, thing you just passed out, the rent <laughs> stabilization funds up to 1.4 million. The capital stabilization is up to 867000 Minus 150000 that we appropriated at town. Oh, it's only right. 700000 For the right. sidewalks. We're down straight in pennies and nickels. No, oh, you're not. <laughs> oh, big, big pennies and big nickels. <laughs> so we're going to just wait until... Uh, yeah, I don't think so. No, I think I, I, is I there wait. anything else we want to talk about about this item? Any other questions or concerns? Okay. Allie, do you have any concerns that you want to follow it up or anything? No, thank you. Okay. Um, there, there's actually, 
in the discussion of the, I'm sorry, but going back to articles one through four, when we voted them, we voted them for free cash. And since then they have rewritten them to say transfer from available funds or otherwise provide. Um, because they're not sure that free cash will be available. So we could go back, and right now you can see how it says, recommended by FinCom with funding source from free cash. We could revote these and agree that they can be from any funding source that you can find, which I would be very comfortable doing. They're not very much money, and I think it's important that they get paid. What funding sources would be available that we could use, if not free cash? General stabilization? Which would require a quantum vote or whatever. Oh, it's, Which it says it's, so. It does anyway. You already have a quantum vote, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If free cash gets that low, where these are going to make a significant difference. Well, no, it's, it's no, we, better we, we certified. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, we, we basically don't have any free cash right now until it's certified. Oh, okay, I understand now. So we can't right. vote that in the right. yeah. money. Yeah. And we already went through the idea of taking it out of uh, reserve fund, and it can't be done because it's old bills. Correct. Yeah, if it, if it hasn't already been appropriated, you can't use the reserve fund. I'll make a motion that for Articles 1 through 4, we strike with funding source from free cash from the recommended by Finance Committee line, so that it will then read just recommended by Finance Committee. I'm sorry, for that. For all four of these. Julie, you're pretty smart. I think that's a great move. Does that make anybody? We need a second. You you call second. the you question. She has the trip and second. It's the nine tenths vote anyway, so it's accepted. Okay. So does anybody? Does that make anybody uncomfortable? Like we don't know what the source is going to be. No. Brenda knows, what, Brenda knows what the source is going to be. She'll figure it out. They're really small <laughs> amounts anyway. They're all small well, amounts. I'm yeah. still pretty confident it should be free cash, but just in case. Okay. Um, let's do roll call vote. John Puffin, aye. John Pareski, aye. John Pachorek, aye. Julie Chalpin, aye. Jim Candius, aye. Skip on said aye. Allison Vandervelden, aye. You're down the end of the table. <laughs> All right. So that passes 700. Um, we are not going to look at financial indicators because we've been talking too long. Um, <laughs> would we will have another meeting on October 4th, half an hour before the special town meeting. Special town meeting is at 6, correct? Right? Yes, half an hour yeah. going to be enough? Well, if we, yeah, that's the question. Would, that is a good question. So maybe 5.15? Five five yeah. And do it here. And, and do it here. And then we can go over to. Oh, okay. Do it here? Yeah. Will we need to do hybrid? I don't know. Why don't we just go over there and have a meeting Let's there? Let's have the meeting there in person. Can we get in? Do you know at five or five? I would think so. Yeah. I'm sure that they'll be there and that place will yeah. be open. It'll be all set up. All right. Let's make it at five fifteen p.m. October fourth. Was that October fourth? Was that location changed or it's at the auditorium? I, I just at missed part of that discussion. Yep. I believe. Uh, is it, at, is it in the auditorium for sure? It is. Okay. That's the last I heard. For the moment. Okay. And is FineCom That's meeting the... there or at the town hall? Yeah. There. <laughs> I just can't hear the answer. Can somebody say it real loud once? At the school. At the it's school. that front Great. here. Okay. I will go there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if move to Jen. I move that we adjourn. Second. Uh, Third. <laughs> roll call. It's always these two. Roll call vote. John Pereski, aye. John Stork, yeah. aye. Julie Chalpin, aye. James Candy, aye. Skip Olmstead, aye. Allison Vanderbilt, and I. All right. We are done.